So I did my educational giant on William Bagley. As I was looking for a picture of him, actually, for the slideshow, I found a quote of him as well. Um, he starts off by saying, Essentialists hope that when students leave school, they will possess not only basic skills and an extensive body of knowledge, but also disciplined, practical minds capable of applying schoolhouse lessons in the real world. So, William Bagley is an essentialist. He, so what essentialism is, basically, if you haven't read the text um, for this week yet, it's basically when teachers only want to teach or stress, definitely stress, the essentials. So there's those core subjects where there's math, social studies, science, English, just those core subjects. And most essentialists have a couple core subjects that they want to stick to. Um, so there is this example in the book, in the textbook, that I really liked. Um, so it says, quote, As dangerous as a little knowledge is, even more dangerous is much knowledge without a strong, principled character. Purely intellectual development makes as much sense as putting a high-powered sports car in the hands of a teenager who is high on drugs. Yet, all too often in the academic world, that's exactly what we do by not focusing on the character development of young people. So this actually reminded me, as I was reading it, of fourth grade for me. Um, we started off the first week, there was this new student in our, um, in our school who had actually, um, had transferred from a different country. So he was placed into fourth grade because that's what his educational history was in his past country, but, um, my teacher quickly realized that he was not supposed to be in fourth grade. He wasn't taught the core subjects, he wasn't taught the essentials, basically. So, that's why the essentialists want to they stress so strongly on teaching the core subjects because he actually ended up going back to third grade and having to retake that grade over. Um, so yeah, so now I'm going to talk about William Bagley's um, educational history. So he received his undergraduate in 1895 at the Agricultural College of the State of Michigan. So he actually set off wanting to be a farmer, but then realized that he didn't have enough money for the supplies or for land even to even make that dream a possibility. So he um, started to take graduate courses from the University of Chicago and the University of Wisconsin. Then, at that time, um, he was also teaching classes as a professor at the, um, the University of Illinois and Columbia. So that kind of opened his eyes to teaching and what he wanted to do with the rest of his life, basically. So, after that, he obtained his doctorate in psychology and education from Cornell University. So I just think that's amazing because he went to four different schools to figure out what he wanted to do, and that must have taken him a really long time. I can only imagine because I'm not even halfway through. Um, so now moving on to his teaching history... As I said, he was a professor at the University of Illinois and Columbia. He, as he was at Cornell, was assistant was an assistant at the at a lab for one of his old professors. Um, a year after he graduated, he worked as um, for a fellowship at the, for the same professor um, in the laboratory. He was then offered a position in Missouri as a principal. He then got offered a better position as the director of teacher practice school um, and a professor of psychology and pedagogy and, uh, at Montana, at the, at the Montana State Normal School in Dillon, Montana. So he is just jumping from place to place, and I just don't know if I would be able to do it. So hats off to him, because then after that, he gets offered a better position as the superintendent of the teacher training department in New York. So he, um, basically wanted to end up teaching teachers. Um, and you'll see after I explain this as well, um, he then got offered another job at a, as a superintendent at the University of Illinois. So, moving on, in Illinois, he, um, he realized, he came to the conclusion that teachers only had to get a liberal arts degree. 
and thought that that was ridiculous and that they needed more training, basically. Um, so he actually set out to build a campus on campus at the University of Illinois for the teachers um, to further their education and to help them um, understand and put their core in essentialism, basically. Um, so Bagley actually founded the University of Illinois School of Education, but he wasn't there to see it finished. He moved away because he got a better job um, as the dean of the teacher's education at the Columbia University, but he moved away a year before it was all finished. Um, so he moved to Columbia. Um, so now I'm going to talk about his books. Um, there was a book called The Educative Process, which turned actually into a textbook for teachers. This book was actually, it became really popular because it obviously became a textbook, and that's what made his name stick out, and that's why he actually got one of his, um, one of his jobs. And then he wrote another book called Classroom Management, which actually talked about the benefits of teaching essentialism early on in the classroom, so basically in elementary school. Um, he then wrote a book called Education, an Emergent Man, A Theory of Education with Particular Application to Public Education in the United States. So it's a mouthful. He actually thought that this book would be the most famous of all of the books that he had written. But he was hoping that this would actually come up in the debates, and it didn't. So he was really disappointed, and many people believe that this is what formed the Essentialists. So he actually formed a group called the Essentialists, and they basically just advocated the emphasis on the strict curriculum of Essentialism, so of all the traditional subjects. So I'm going to read you the three things that they set out to do. So first, they recognized the right of an immature student to the guidance of a well-educated, caring, and cultured teacher. Second, they proposed that an, inef that an effective democracy demanded a, dem a democratic culture in which students imparted the ideals of community to each succeeding generation of children. And third, they called for a specific program of studies that require thoroughness, accuracy, persistence, and good workmanship on the part of pupils. So, as you can see, going over um, William Bagley's life, he found it a lot more pressing to get the educators more educated, basically, for lack of a better term. Um, so he set off to build a build a school for teachers and uh, I think that that's really important and also um, he started basically essentialism which I think is an amazing method of education um, but yeah thanks for listening